Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and welcome to Research Tools Video 12. This is Python Part 5, The While Loop. And today is October 13th, and we'll go ahead and hide this and get going. Let's start up a IPython shell, IPython-PyLab, and I'm going to show you the while loop. So we'll start off with a somewhat contrived case here. We'll type count equals zero to create some sort of looping variable while count is less than five let's print count and then let's add one count equals count plus one press enter twice and here we have our first while loop that we can use as an example to figure out while and I'm gonna hint to you now that if you're writing a while loop in your code most likely you're going to want to think about what you're doing and see if you can rewrite it as a for loop and iterate across something. Typically most of the time that you think you might need a while loop you actually don't. Uh, it, there are times when you definitely need a while loop but uh, in general you might want to think about it slightly differently and I'll show you an example of how that might be. But let's take a look here. This is the while uh, keyword. This is that defines the beginning of a while loop. And after that, we have some sort of test, a Boolean test, to see if we're going to keep looping through. And while this is true, it's going to run anything that's in the block down below. And when this becomes false, it's going to skip out of that and move on with the rest of your code. In this case, it will just stop. And the colon ends that line. And then you indent, like normal, with four spaces for uh, your block. We'll do print count. And then we're going to add one to count so that we might actually end someday. If you look here, it's going to loop through. It starts off with zero. Then we go to one, two, three, four, etc. And let's do a little bit more interesting example. Maybe we'll say count equals zero, count, or say while count less than 10. And we'll say print count. And now we'll say count plus equals three. Now I haven't shown you the plus equals operator before, this guy right here. But this is the same as saying the variable name equals and then the variable name and then plus some number. This is a lot more concise and once you get used to it, it is much easier to read. And programmers who've been working with this kind of language for a long time are much more used to seeing plus equals when they see variables that are incremented. And we'll go ahead and press enter and enter and enter to end that. And you'll see that we start off with zero we come through the loop and we print zero, we add three to it, come back around, uh, then we add three to it again, we get six, and we get nine, then we come around and nine, after we get nine, we get 12, and that's greater than 10, so it exits out. Now, this definitely works, and it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but I would argue that typically you want to do things more like this, count in range zero, 10, three, so this is starts at zero, goes up to but not including 10, and steps by three with our range function. And then we'd say print count. Gives you exactly the same results, but it's a lot more compact. And once you're used to things like range, I would argue this is a little bit easier to read and clearer than having to have uh, four lines of stuff running around and you have to look for things changing inside of your loop. But this is definitely correct Python and so it's uh, good to know. And let me show you a case where uh, something like a while loop actually is pretty important and that would be something called a daemon. These are long-running programs that uh, maintain the system and do various tasks for you. I'm going to quit out of IPython here. I'll do quit. Yes. And let's take a quick peek at the system. So we'll do a ps-adef listing all the processes in the system. And if we look here, these are processes running inside of Linux that are doing various things. And some of them are even Python. So we have here some system service that's off being written in Python. And this is something that's going to be running around the system, watching stuff or taking care of things for us in the background. So if you're doing something like that, let's go ahead and open, we'll write my daemon.py just for a little uh, starter program and we'll pound bang user bin env searches the their environment for the user's account in Python. So that's your normal setup for a Python script and we'll say 
while true. A little weird, huh? This actually is designed to run forever. So until we do something otherwise, that this is going to loop around and keep doing some task. And let's just make up a little arbitrary one, maybe just a counter that, that keeps running. So we'll say uh, import time. This is a module that knows about time that we'll get into more later. And we're going to use something from it called use sleep. And we'll go back to IPython and we'll sort of watch this as we go. So IPython import time, time.sleep. And there it is, delay execution for a given number of seconds. And so while true, we will have a counter. So count is zero to begin with. We'll say count plus equals one. And we'll print count. In fact, we'll move it around to make it a little bit more obvious. So we'll start with the print count, then we'll add it, and then we'll take a nap. So we'll say time.sleep. And if, whoops, if we don't do anything, that will just go forever. Now, I'm not going to run inside of Emacs or inside of IPython. Sleep and long running things don't do well with uh, interactive um, tasks in IPython or Emacs. So we'll go back to our shell and we'll do an ls l and we're going to say chmod plus x to make this executable my daemon. Take a look. And in fact, now we have an executable here and the color has changed over here. So we'll say dot slash my daemon, press return, and sleep. We have our first bug here, so let's take a quick peek. We have a trace back, and it's in this file on line 9, time sleep. And it says type error sleep takes exactly one argument. So I didn't tell it how long to sleep here. So we need to say, and this is the number of seconds. So we'll just say 0.2 seconds. We can make it a bit more obvious, 0.2 seconds. And that's going to be our delay. So let's try it again. And here we go. It's going to keep counting and delays by 0.2 seconds on each loop. We press Control C, that's what this is right here, to get out of that. And this program will just run forever if we let it. So we can just off it goes. And if this were running in the background, it would just keep going. So that's the basic use of a while loop. When you write graphical interfaces or GUIs, so graphical user interface, then you probably want to have something like this. And in, in this, this true might either be a test to say, um, you might say running equals true while running. And then we could say something like, you know, if there's some case where the user hits a button or we reach some like uh, case we want to quit, we can say if count is greater than 20, we can say running equals false. That will set that to bail out of there. And so the next time that, that gets set, it will come back up the top the while we'll loop and we'll say print cleaning and exiting. We'll go ahead and run that again. So it's going to count up to 20 and then it should exit for us. Oh, look, and there we go. So that works pretty well. Now, the other case that you can use things like while loops is if you have a data file. So let's just concoct a little data file. We'll just say data.dat. And what you might have is you might have a bunch of ASCII text headers. So we can just say um, header one, this file contains sample junk data. And then we can say one, two, three, some numbers. Okay, so we have our little sample data. And what we could do is we could write a little script that says read data.py, create a little Python script here. So use your bin env python, we'll go get our interpreter. And we can say, uh, let's see, in file equals open 
and data dot that. So we're going to open up our file for reading. So we could also just be explicit. We don't have to put in the R, it's the default. And we can say um, line equals in file dot read line. And we can say while line so zero equals so we're looking for this little comment character so we're going to skip all of this header we want to keep doing nothing in here and there's a nice little python tool to help you do nothing called pass which will just be a placeholder so this will loop around until it's um, notice and we'll just put a little comment here and we'll say skip comments and then what we would do is then we can say um, for line in yeah, that's bad we'll do while uh we'll just do, yeah for line in and then we'll have to do um in file Line. Now this is definitely going to be buggy and I will show you a better way to do it in a second. Let's drag this down a little bit so we can see. Let's try this script. It's not going to do what we expect but it's close. So in this case the while loop will skip over those and we'll say um, python read data since I'm not doing chmon. And we'll see what happens. And it's very unhappy. Uh, okay because we didn't keep reading. So this is why whiles are trouble. So we'll say um, line equals, and we'll just copy this, control K, control Y, control Y. Let's try that again. So it read our data and it skipped the headers, but if you notice, it actually missed this line here. So it's definitely not necessarily what you want. Let me write you a quick script that would do more like what I would expect to see with a for loop. So we'll do um, read data version 2 and we'll create a user bin env python and we'll say for line in open and we have data dot that as our file and what we would do then is say if If this character, the comment character, the hash or pound, uh, is in line, continue. So continue, when you see that, it jumps back to the top without doing anything else than the loop. Um, we, we had break and continue last time, and break would jump out of the for loop. But continue in this case would uh, goes back up to the top and won't run anything rest of the file. So we could say print line. So it's only going to print the line if there isn't this pound character in that line before. Let's go ahead and save that. So we can do a chmod plus x read data star dot pi. And we can then do an lsdl slash l to make sure we've got everything there. And do remember that when you see these tilde files, that is Emacs doing a backup file. So those are just being built automatically. But let's go ahead and try our read data to dot pi. and I type too much and let's go ahead and try that okay so if if the number sign is in the line continue uh, otherwise print the line so here we got the first line second line third line if we look over here at our data file we got this line this line and this line so this is a little bit more compact uh, and again the while loops tend to be trickier to pull off and uh, a little more, a little less direct as to what you're doing. Okay, now there's one thing I also want to show you, and that's um, if we go into IPython, PyLab, and what we could say is, let's change this up to be def load data. So we'll make this a function. I'm going to control space over this, and there's a really handy thing in here 
if we go to shift region right control C greater than it's gonna bump our code to the right and so that handles Python indenting for you it's very nice so we'll save that and we're gonna go ahead and import read data to into so if we do an ls-l here we have our read data to it's executable we can also import it so import read data to now let's do an ls-l and you notice a new file appeared a PYC this is now Python's an interpreter language but when it imports a module it will actually byte compile the code so turn it into a special form that's faster for it to work with and write out that as a file called a PYC for compiled so once you've imported a whole bunch of stuff it will import faster the second time around that you run it um, so now we have our um, stuff our load data function written up and we can import it so we have ourselves a nice little set it doesn't do anything very useful for us but that gives you a sense of the while loop and why maybe you might not want to use the while loop very often uh, thanks for joining me and we'll have more very soon